welcome to subramani please click on the bell icon uh, please like subscribe share these videos uh, last week or maybe last month uh, i read a report by one of the big bankers about uh, how the uh, real rich the ultra rich in the world which means the top 1% of the world population how do they allocate uh, their assets as to what are the assets in which they invest and uh, the data was quite nice to see almost 50% of their money goes to alternatives right alternative asset classes uh, now uh, does it mean all of us have to copy what the rich and famous do uh, well i think these reports are released Uh, to create FOMO and for people to say, look, I am now ultra rich and I, I need to allocate according to the uh, Morgan report, right? So maybe, maybe it is created. Uh, these reports are created to uh, create are created to create FOMO in you. Uh, is it true? Is it necessary that to get rich you have to invest in alternative assets? Uh, I don't know. I know rich people who don't, and I know people who are not so rich who do, right? So, what are these uh, alternative uh, investments that one is talking about? Uh, obviously, there is private equity to start with. Then there is venture capital. Then there is uh, real estate, right? So, these are the biggies which take uh, all the cake. Then there is uh, P2P, which means person-to-person -person lending. You can do lending at the lowest uh, level, which means to an individual. Instead of keeping a bank deposit, you could give a loan to somebody. you could invest in reit you could invest in global reit right all these uh, all these would be uh, alternatives right so obviously private equity venture capital hedge funds private credit collectibles collectibles is art and uh, horses and things like that right so these are all the uh, alternative assets so our alternative as why do people invest in alternative assets there is supposed to be a less of a correlation compared to your other assets now typically what are the assets in which um, a common man uh, invests uh, it is it could be equity it could be debt it could be mutual funds and other than that some saving instruments etc this is where normal people uh, invest right so why do people invest in alternatives is one because it is supposed to be less correlated to these assets so suppose you have invested in an international reit obviously there is no connection that it has with the uh, domestic indian equity so when indian equity is down by 3% your reit could be up by 8% so some portion of your assets are doing better so it's an asset allocation call as to how much you want to keep in alternate assets and which alternate assets alternate assets have some uh advantages and some disadvantages the benefit is of course that the uh it is less correlated secondly the returns could be higher you're taking more risk so the returns could be higher uh and some portion of your money could always be in the red or in the green depending if all your shares all your portfolio is in the green it's not something to be feeling great about because suddenly all of it could be in the red so you want your asset allocation in done such a way uh done in such a way that uh, some portion is in india some portion is in dollar some portion is in uh, uh, in real estate some portion is in uh, assets like venture capital right so you want you want a range of assets so it's an asset allocation and you have the money to do it so what is the problem in uh, investing in these uh, assets one is um, there could be a higher threshold they could say the minimum amount that you have to invest is say 2 crores <coughs> the uh, the regulation is less uh an international reach may not be regulated much at all right um, so if you put money in an international reit with a company in india and the whole jurisdiction is out of india then there is nothing anybody can do for you if things go wrong third these are more expensive these are not as cheap as some of your say mutual funds your hedge funds can't be as cheap as your mutual funds because there is a uh, profit sharing beyond a particular threshold level right so they are more expensive they are more complex more complicated to understand the the uh, supervision available the oversight available by a regulator may be less 
right in p2p lending you don't expect rbi or somebody to come and protect you because the, the guy who took money from you vanished right so these kind of things will happen so it is riskier it is less liquid if you put money in a venture capital uh, company or a, and they could tell you that look we are investing in these two three companies uh, and it could take 10 years for the liquidity to be provided so for 10 years your investments remain illiquid perhaps be a, you could get a chance in between that some company is got listed in 3 months in 3 years or 4 years and therefore you got liquidity but the rule is you will get less liquidity you will pay higher fees you will have lesser uh, uh, super supervision by the regulator right less oversight by the regulator uh, all these things are there why are you doing it because you are hoping that the correlation that the Uh, investment that you are making with your regular portfolio is not there at all so if when your regular portfolio is sinking or is not doing well uh, for whatever reasons there is a bear market you think that this uh, investments which you have made which are in alternative assets will do better than the assets in which you are uh, otherwise regularly investing right so the returns have to be high enough for you to justify that extra cost that extra super vision that you have to do the extra monitoring that you have to do the uh, fact that you have to pay attention to it regularly right you don't have to pay much attention if you are doing an uh, uh, sip in an index fund right there is not much supervision that you have to do you have to only check that your uh, account is being debited regularly and that you once in a while have a look at the statement and say oh i uh, i've been doing this for one year and i was doing 1 lakh per month so 12 lakhs is invested that is right there is no check which has uh, there is no uh, debit which has not happened or things like that beyond that you did not don't really need to monitor in case of alternatives you may have to be intelligent enough to know what to monitor how to monitor whether to monitor when to monitor right all those things it takes some amount of effort from your side also apart from the fact that they are more expensive and uh, <coughs> and fairly obviously uh, more complicated for you to understand so why 